Hi, in this video we're going to look at a couple of examples of using quotient rule. So there are four examples on this page and not all of them require quotient rule. So in the last video we talked through distinguishing which ones require quotient rule and which ones don't. And so the key thing is that the ones that require quotient rule are the ones where we have a function of x divided by another function of x. So when we looked at how quotient rule was written, we had f of x over g of x, and we were wanting to differentiate that with respect to x. So variables in both the numerator and denominator. And I'm going to go ahead and write quotient rule over here to the side. All right, so this is how I remember quotient rule, and you can memorize it in slightly different order if you want. But the key thing to remember is that you have to have the order of terms on the numerator correct because that's subtraction. So you can't switch the order of those terms on the numerator. You can switch around the multiplication within that term. So instead of having f prime of x first and then times g of x, you can switch the order on those two. Uh, and then similarly in the second term, but can't switch the order of the terms. All right, so once you've identified that you need to use quotient rule and you remember quotient rule, then it's just a matter of writing down the derivative, kind of following through the steps. If you find yourself getting lost, then I would advise writing down some cues for yourself so that you can remember what you're doing and not get lost in the problem. So I'm going to write some little cues just above what I would write for my derivative here. All right, so I wrote some cues here just using words to remind myself of what I'm doing. And you can do that or you don't have to and you can use sort of different mnemonic device to help you remember quotient rule if you want. But the key thing is that you can remember quotient rule and then just implement it correctly. All right, so I'm going to start by taking the derivative of the top. So the derivative of 5x squared minus 2x plus 1. So I will have 10x, 10x to the first if you want to write that, minus 2, the derivative of 2x is 2, and then plus 0, if you want to write that, the derivative of 1 is 0. I'm not going to write it on this one. Derivative of the top, and then I'm using my q's up here so that I don't get lost and forget what I was doing. Uh, so times the bottom, so I'm just writing that bottom function down, minus the top function. I'm just going to write that down. Then times the derivative of the bottom function. So this is just going to be the derivative of 3x squared plus 4. So I will have 6x to the first if you want. And then the derivative of 4, that constant term is 0. So I'm not going to write that. And then I have all of that over the bottom, the original denominator, squared. All right, and it's perfectly fine to leave your answer like this unless you need it simplified. If you do need it simplified, be careful about how you do that. One common mistake that I see students make is that they will identify some factors that match, for example, in this one, 3x squared plus 4 in the numerator and a 3x squared plus 4 in the denominator and try to cancel those. You can't cancel those because you don't have a 3x squared plus 4 factor that is part of the last term, whatever is happening after the minus sign. So those 3x squared plus 4 factors that I highlighted there do not cancel because I don't have a common factor on the numerator of 3x squared plus 4. So if you are going to simplify, you're going to have to expand out the terms on the numerator. So foil out what you've got in those first parentheses and use distributive property. Be careful about the minus sign in the middle and then combine like terms. And then same on the denominator, you can either leave that as 3x squared plus 4 the quantity squared, or you can expand all that out. If you do expand all that out though, you need to be careful about what you're doing. I'm going to go ahead and over here to the side, write out quickly the expanded form of this. So if you want to practice simplifying, you can. But in my math lab homework and on the written homework for this class, generally I am indicating to you that you do not need to simplify your answers. Okay, so there is a version of a simplified form for this one. Again, I wouldn't necessarily advise doing that unless you're going to do something else with it. For example, find a second derivative. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this next one using quotient rule and go through that one as well. All right, so this time I'm going to do that without writing out those verbal cues, but I'm going to say them to myself. All right, so the derivative of the top times the bottom 
minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. And again, perfectly fine to leave your answer like that. If you do want to expand that out, you can do that. There might be some terms you can combine or cancel. Um, I would advise probably not doing that unless you need to. For example, if you're going to find a second derivative, maybe you would do that on this one. But my advice is just to leave it in that form for now and practice finding the derivatives. All right, in the next video, we will look at some higher order derivatives, uh, second, third, and fourth derivatives that I mentioned in this video, but we haven't really talked about yet, but that's what the next video is about.